challenge for him. So there'll be some well, great fights. I want fights you to do. I want you to make your first shot to the body when you when you get out. Once you turn out, make your first shot to the body. Okay. In the corner on the inside, we we mentioned how Paul Williams fights so well on the inside. Landing a good portion of those punches and really working very well with to the body and the head. He knows how to fight inside. He may be tall, but he can do that. So after a seven-month layoff, coming off a controversial win, Paul Williams enters the seventh round looking very sharp, especially over the last three against Nubahiro Ishida in the aqua and black trunks. No knockdowns in this fight thus far. Scheduled for 12, junior middleweight division, 154 pounds. And talking to Paul yesterday in our fighter meeting, he said, not only do I want to look impressive, I want to get back to being considered one of the pound for pound best fighters in the world. I want to get back in the conversation. I don't want to fight for another 10 years like you, Antonio, <laughs> until my 40s, but I do want three or four good fights with big paydays. Well, what he's going to have to do in order to earn that is fight these marquee fighters. He's going to have to get that rematch with Sergio Martinez. He's going to have to fight a guy like Pacquiao or Floyd Mayweather, and he's going to have to do something dramatic in order to put himself in that type of uh, conversation. We mentioned uh, how what a volume puncher he is. That's a good evidence of it. Uh, only landing at 25%. He doesn't land at 30 or 40 or 50%, which is the really impressive number. But because he throws so many, he lands a lot of punches. And he's landing twice as many as Ishida. And speaking of fighting some of those high profile upper echelon fighters, Williams told us that nobody wanted to fight him when he was hot. Nobody called out Paul Williams when he was the champion. Not Floyd, not Pacquiao. But since he's lost, many may consider him vulnerable enough to get in the ring. And if he wants to achieve the things that he just said, or you just said that he wants to achieve, that may be a blessing in disguise because when you're red hot and you're beating everybody with that volume type of punches, you're 6'2", you got the reach and range, you're like a cancer. No fighter wants to risk their title and their prestigious name fighting a tough fighter like Paul Williams. I got you, I got you, I got you. Here we go, here we go. Lead uppercut, glancing right off there. the right forearms right of Ishida by Williams. Ishida showing a lot of toughness in this fight tonight. A lot of hunger, 36 years old. Ishida coming in with a 24 and six. And two record with nine KOs. Stop, stop. And Gus, that was nine KOs an indication. Yes, he knocked James Kirkland out in round one. He had another knockout in round one the last time out. He's not really a big puncher. And that puts him in a difficulty in this fight because he's going to need to land something big now to win this fight. And like Paul Williams said, he thinks he's a different class of fighter. Well, if he feels that he's a different class of fighter, Paul Williams should press for a KO tonight, a dramatic KO, to really rise his stock in the boxing game. Williams walks back to his stool, looking very confident. In the meantime, we will go to Ashita's corner. is a windmill of activity in every fight and he throws from every hand there there's an elbow that lands to the head of Ishida um, and uh, that one had to smart just a little bit and then uh, later on the uh, you see the uppercut from long range actually a punch you don't normally want to throw from long range but he was able to get away with it and land it against Ishida as we prepare for the eighth round scheduled for 12 in the junior middleweight division Nobuhiro Ishida and Paul Williams off the stool. Williams with the flurry, not much landing, slapping with the right hand. Oh, the hook getting through that time. Williams, volume punching, working the body, going upstairs. He's going for that knockout. Yeah, he, he feels it. I mean, he feels like, hey, I got to do something. 
something big in order to uh, show these people that I'm on another level and as, as he should. Come on. So Paul Williams, as we mentioned numerous times, getting back into the ring for the first time in quite a while after coming off that controversial win over Lara. Prior to that, he fought WBC middleweight champ Sergio Martinez twice. Stretched in the second fight. He fought IBF welterweight champion Kermit Citron. WBC Super World champion Winky Wright and former WBO and two-time IBF junior middleweight world champion Vernal Phillips. Last time he had, according to him, a tune-up fight was Andy Cole in 2008. He's fought a tough schedule. Good right hand by Ishida. She just landed a couple of good power punches in this round. Not enough to turn things around. Oh my, there's another one. Right there. There we go. Prior to the Andy Cole tune-up fight, he fought Carlos Quiana, uh, Quintana, KO'd him in the first round, and one of his biggest victories, Antonio Margarito, a 12-round oh, yeah. decision. Oh, yeah, because at the time, you know, Margarito and guys like Winky Wright was those type of guys that no fighter wanted to fight because, you know, they, if they didn't beat you, they made you look bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that was a lose-lose at that time for any one of those fighters. And they produced a great fight. And again, a decision that some people questioned Stop. that Paul Williams right. won, but it was a very exciting we'll fight. Let's hold it. you know, it's a little discouraging for him probably. He's landed some count some power punches this round there, that have go, not go. hurt Williams. And because Williams is out punching him by so many punches, uh, it's hard for him to win any of these rounds. Yeah, I think Ashida is having problems setting up the power. Yeah. It seems like Paul Williams is going to have to uh, take a risk and run into something in order for Ashida to be able to uh, change this fight around. And Paul Williams so, hasn't done that right? really, even though he's made a few little faux pas perhaps. Oh, nice right again by Ashida. And that's what I mean. He's standing straight up while the guy is in position to land a punch, and he's trying his uppercuts from outside, yeah. which is dangerous punches in itself. Yep. You don't want to give a puncher that type of opportunity. round to try and get back into things. You see him punching on the inside. There's a nice straight right hand. Didn't land perfectly, but I got there in another. He's, you know, he's landing some punches. That last right hand was maybe his best punch of the sequence, but he's not able to really hurt Paul Williams at this juncture. And Williams, now there, there's an example of Williams delivering that left very wide, and it's not, it's counterable, and it was countered by Ishida, but he didn't get hurt. off the stool as we head into the ninth round of 12. Williams in red, Ashida in aqua and black. There was some school of thought that Ishida, who uh, is a decent or pretty good junior middleweight, that the win over Kirkland was a bit of an aberration and the, that school of thought could you know, be somewhat accurate because obviously tonight Ishida has shown himself not to quite be on the level of a Paul Williams. Let's check in with Chuck Ciampa to find out what's on his scorecard. Okay, in the past, um, the Paul Williams and two controversial decisions against Lara and Cintron, the judges had a tendency to award him rounds based on his reputation. Tonight he has earned every round. He's nonstop, effective, aggressive. Have a shout out for Paul Williams. I agree. I don't. I don't think I can give a round to Ishida in this fight. Stop! Stop! Break. Paul Williams, in his last five fights, has averaged 81 punches a round. In this round, he's so far he's thrown 28. He has slowed his pace, but I think by his own design, not 
from fatigue or anything. He's just taking his time. Thank you. And here's a question at this point, if he continues, where does this performance put him? I think it, what it does is it, it lets people know he's capable of a very good, solid performance right now. He's showing it right here and going after Ishida. I don't think it makes a dramatic statement, but it says this is a solid fighter who has gotten his head back together and has fought a very solid fight. Well, I don't think anybody will question that. He's definitely a solid fighter. Yeah. But is he in the pound for pound conversation? Is he the best fighter in his weight class type of conversation? You know, like I said, there's a question that has to be answered. Uh, you know, if a shooter is not on his level, then he should show the world, show the world right now that he's not by a dramatic knockout, making it happen. That's a good point. He's hit the guy with everything but the kitchen sink. What is he still there for? Okay, that's a good point. And so, you know, so if he doesn't knock him out, Antonio, would that diminish this brilliant performance? No, he's just going to have to get back on, back to the drawing board. He's going to have to tighten up a little bit, and he's going to have to get better. Even at the, uh, you know, the age that he's at now, he's going to have to get better. Nice lead right hook. That staggered Ashita. And we come to the end of the round.